In this video, we're going to pick up where we started or where we finished last time, which was we got the menu working and we had all of the different e events that were firing back and forth. So that when I click on one of these bridges, it's going to drop into, I'll show you my console logs again. It's going to go into the list items click event which is going to trigger the on bridge selected uh, callback inside of my menu component, which is going to trigger the handle bridge change. And the last thing that we did was we specified a property, some state on our app component to keep track of which, if any, bridge is selected. So what I wanna to do today is I, I want to continue on with that, but I want to start filling out the right hand side of our app and and building out the bridge info component. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make use of this current bridge value, the state that we now have in the app. So when the user clicks on a bridge, I want to know which one it is. And I want to pass that data over to my child component, the into the bridge info component. So let's start in on that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bridge info component, which we generated a couple of videos back with uh, ng generate. And I'm going to make it so that this component can receive data from its parent. So you'll recall, if we take a look, for example, at the menu component, that we were able to specify that we wanted to be able to send data out to a parent. And that's what we use the output decorator for, and we use the event emitter in order to emit an event, some piece of data, up to a parent component for them to be able to use. What I want to do in this case inside of the bridge info component is I want to do the opposite. I want to be able to accept data in from a parent component. So in React, this is passing props down to a child. Here, I'm going to say that I want to pull in the input decorator and I'm going to specify that this bridge component, this bridge info component is going to be capable of accepting data or input from above from a parent component. So I'm going to call this bridge. The type is going to be bridge. Again, we're going to have to import. Oh, I guess I already have here. I've imported my bridge. But I'm going to have to decorate this and say that this is an input property so that I can receive this data from my parent. I'll save that. Now, in my app components HTML, when I create this uh, bridge info component, what I can do is I can use another one of the templating syntaxes for Angular. So above here, you'll see on line four, we said with round parenthesis, this is the bridge selected event that I want to bind a callback to. Well, in this case, what I want to do is I want to bind data flowing down from the parent component into the child component. So I want to say that the bridge inside the bridge info component is going to be received from the parent and it's going to be equal to, you know, whatever it is I'm going to, I'm going to pass down into it. So in our case, what we want to do is we want to say it's equal to the current bridge. What does that mean? If we go again and look at app component, current bridge is a property of this component, which is being set whenever the user clicks on something in the, uh, in the menu. And the bridge info component is going to receive it and we'll be able to use it there. So let me save this 
so that I can pass that down. And let's make a simple change to our bridge info component just to make sure that we're receiving this data. So in our bridge info components HTML, currently it says that it works. What I'd like to do is I'd like to say, uh, this is the bridge name. So I want to use interpolation. I want to use this property and I want to pass that down. Pass that down from the parent into the child and then I want to be able to see it. Now we get an error. Right away my browser says cannot read property name of undefined. So this it's telling me that this is um, not there. Like bridge doesn't exist. So why is that the case? Well, if we look at our code, we can see that our app component is currently, like when the component is first built, so at startup, this component doesn't have a value. Okay, so if it doesn't have a value, that means we have two cases we have to think about. We have to think about the case where the data has been set, a bridge has been chosen, but we also have to think about the startup case where the user hasn't chosen a bridge yet and we have to do something different. Okay, so inside of our bridge info component, what we need to do is we need to use another directive. So let's just modify this. I want to use a directive here. So previously we used ng4 equals, we said bridge of bridges like this. Well, this time instead of a for loop, I want to use ng if, and I want to say only render this, only do this part of the template if the following expression evaluates to truthy. So in other words, is it defined? Is there something there? So I'm going to say, is there a bridge? So I'll save this. And in the default case, nothing happens. It's not showing anything. If I click on a bridge, you can see that my events are firing. I get the console logs here. And as the state gets set in the app, it's then binding that down into the child. It's passing the bridge and the bridge is being used in order to render. In this case, it's rendering the name. So that's good. So now what we can do is we can, we can build on this. We can make this um, do more of what we want it to do. Okay, so let's, Let's get, let's get rid of this because this is not enough work. So what I wanna do is I wanna have a containing div. This will be my bridge info. Um, actually, I don't even, I'm not gonna bother. So let's have a div. Let's put my app bridge info panel component in here. And let's also put the app bridge info map component in here. So those are the two components that need to go that need to go here. So right now our focus is on this component and I only want to render the info panel across the top on the right if ng if the bridge is defined. If the bridge is defined, then what I want to do is I want to pass that bridge on down through the hierarchy of components. So we received it from our parent. I want to pass it down further. I want to pass it down and let the child make use of it, render it. Okay, so app bridge info panel. So the panel component needs to be able to receive that bridge from its parent. So let's let's do that. So we have the info panel component in the TypeScript definition for this file. What I need to be able to do is I need to specify that we have a bridge member. So remember the things we have to do here. I have to specify that this is going to be received from a parent. So this is, I need the input decorator. 
So I'm gonna decorate this property and say that this bridge property is gonna come from outside. It's gonna be passed down to me, okay? Like so. And in the HTML for this, here, let's let's make this do something else. Let's say um, heading to I want to have the bridges name, and I'll pipe that through the title case pipe again. And let's have a div um, of statistics, and I want to have the year, I want to have the um, width of the bridge, and I want to have the length of the bridge, like so. So in addition to the year, I also want to print out the however many years old this bridge is like that. So that's that's kind of what I'm trying to produce with this bridge information. So I have a bunch of things here where I, I need to print values that need to be generated or I have to pull data off of the bridge and do something. So I could do a bunch of work here in my HTML, but I also could just move that into my, into my um, TypeScript file, into my component. And I could define some properties or methods that I want to be able to call. So for example, if I want the width, it's a string that we're going to return. And so um, we have the length and it's a string that we're going to return. And I have age. And age is a number. Like so. So in the case of the um, in the case of the the width and the length, essentially what I want to do is I want to print. So let's say that the the length is eighteen. Well, I'd like to return a string that's like eighteen meters, something like that. But if the um, if the length is unknown, or sorry, if the length is null, let's return unknown, something like that. So we want to be able to deal with all the, the both cases. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a function to pretty print the dimension. I'm going to pass in a value, which is a number, and I'm going to return back a string. Actually, it's a number or, or it could be null. Maybe there's nothing. And what I want to do here is I want to say if the value exists, then I want to return the value followed by meters. And if it doesn't, then I want to return unknown like that. So I have a function that I should be able to use for both of these for the width and the length. So let's do that. So I want to return pretty print dimension and I want to take the bridge that has been passed to me and I want to get its width. And for length, I want to return pretty print dimension uh, bridge dot length. Like so, it's unhappy with me for having an extra space here. So there you are, TS lint. And, um, oh, sorry, I can't do bridge. I have to do this dot bridge, this dot bridge, this dot bridge, like so. Age is similar, so I wanna be able to say what? I wanna return, I need to get the current, uh, const current year is equal to, um, make a date, and get the full year out of it, like so. And then what I wanna do is I wanna return the current year minus this dot bridge dot year. How many years old is it? It's however many years there are between those two dates. 
So now I have width, length, and age that I can use. So let's make use of those in our component. So this, the year of this we already have, it's available to us on the bridge. So we can say, we can use interpolation. We can say bridge dot year. And the number of years is going to be the age, evaluating the age method it gets called. For width, we can say call the width method. And here we can say call the length method, like so. Save this, and if we click on a bridge, we get we get this. So this is the year that it was year that it was built, 121 years ago. The width is unknown. The length is 49. So we can go through and click on all of these and get get the data. I want to style this so that it looks a little bit better. Essentially, what I'd like to do is I'd like to um, have these be spread across. I want to use Flexbox against, again to have them go across and um, put a little bit of space with the titling. So let's just put in, so our H2 element, I'll put a margin so I have a little bit of space. And for our um, bridge stats class, let's display the children using Flexbox. Let's flex direction row. Again, that's the default, but won't hurt to have it. Let's justify the content so that it spaces evenly. So there's going to be a lot like it'll, I'll show you, it's easier to see it, how it lays things out. And let's specify this font size to be 1.3 EM. So the font's a little bit bigger. Click on one of these, nice. And okay, that's looking pretty good. So bridge info panel. Um, what else do I want to do with this in terms of styling? For the uh, bridge info panel and the map, I need to lay those out as well in the parent element. So in my Bridge info component. I have these two two pieces, and I, I basically want to flex them down. So I want to have the map take up most of the space, but have the panel be up at the top. So let's let's just I'm going to give this an ID of bridge info panel, and this one an ID of um, I'll call it leaflet map, I guess, for now. We'll, we're not going to do this one here. We'll come back to it. But for now, we'll do this. And I need to style this component. I need to specify that the um, bridge info is uh, display flex. I want it to flex down. Direction is column. Height is 100%. And then I need to say that the bridge info panel ha is going to flex one of the units. And let's do the leaflet map, flex it five units. So the map will take up quite a bit more than the panel above it. I want the height 100% with 100%. And um, I want it also to lay out its children using flex. Flex and flex direction column. So they stretch downward inside it. Justify the content space around and center everything. 
And finally, I have some colors, some sort of green. I, I pick some colors that go with the map. So I'll just toss these in here as well. So there we are. So what do we have here? We've got, we're flexing left to right for the uh, menu and the bridge info. And then the bridge info panel is flexing down the content. So we have two things in here. We have this uh, H2, and then we have a div that contains all of these. And it's spacing things out nicely for us. Everything's centered. And you can see that the, the way that it is doing um, the spacing, how it's justifying the content. So it's spacing everything out so there's extra space between them. So if this gets bigger, it will manage that for me and it'll increase increase the amount of space that it's it's putting for each one of these. If this gets taller, um, if the viewport gets taller, this, this will change. It's, I don't have enough space here to really adjust it that far, but it'll change as and the map will take up the rest of the positioning here uh, so that we have all that we need to be able to show show what's going on there. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to adjust here. I think that might be a good place to pause because the last thing we have to do is pretty involved and it's to get this map so that the map does what we want. I think I'm going to pause there and then the next video I'll work on the map.